welcome to another episode of Madge Unmuted. I'm going to wreck myself doing that someday. Uh, I am your host, Madge Madigan. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Madge Unmuted. Like I said, I'm going to get right to our guest because she's fantastic and this is going to be a little different show. So buckle up, buttercup. Um, <laughs> we have... Uh, the original pole dancing medium, Amy White. Hey. Hi. How are you, girl? I am good. How are you? I am great. Amy is a very, very dear close friend of mine. So I'm very excited about this. And uh, But before we get on with that, I got to introduce Fitz. You don't have to. Yeah, I do. Because I mean, you're an integral part. I'll just part. pop in in the, in the bubble. You're in touch with show. This is Fitz from Rockbox Studios. How you doing? He's he records this and and he's yeah. I pushed he, all the buttons. He and pushes buttons and he. And I push Madge's buttons. Yeah, the wrong anybody. ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, he pushes. Oh wait, no, that was gonna sound bad. I won't say it the yeah, other way. Wait, um. Yeah. Anyway, he uh, Rockbox um studio uh for all your recording needs um Rockbox dot com. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, and bef- while you're here, I'll tell you real quick to please like, share, and subscribe. Yeah. Do all those things. Do that. Okay. So back to back to why we're here. The one and only Miss Amy White. Dun, hello, dun, dun. Hello. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to keep a straight face here, but you guys are. I know. There's it. no need to keep a straight face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be serious. It's. No. Yeah. No, nah, there's there's no serious. Well, no, there's a little bit of serious, but you don't have to try real hard. Um, so let me clarify the pole dancing part first. Do we want to show that? Do we want to see the the pole dancing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I want to see it. I'm I'm work. <laughs> I'm I'm just been sitting here watching it. I don't know if the file is going to work anymore because I've just been watching it over and he over. He wore it over. out. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Girl, girl, let me tell you. Let so she is not um a stripper, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> no. get that not straight. that there's anything wrong with no, that. No, not that. that I pay wrong. a lot of gratitude to the strippers that came before me that allow me to do pole fitness in the open without having to defend it or explain it. Absolutely, and women yeah. should be able to earn a buck any way they want to I agree. anyway I agree. so but you do it for <laughs> we could go <laughs> we could go down that path if you want <laughs> i'm all for sex workers uh anyway whew, thought about it a couple times myself when times are tough <laughs> but anyway <laughs> again you doing it for fitness and i do it for fitness you look so banging do you can it, is it okay to to say how old you are? Or do you sure, use, absolutely. Yeah. You are fifty. She is fifty. <laughs> I'm fifty. And I can't hear you really well, but <laughs> she can kick. And no, that's an old Saturday Night Live. Um, and <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> fifty years old. Uh, she's fifty years old. She, you gorgeous, gorgeous, fit Thank as a you. fiddle. As fiddles go, <laughs> you're fit. So how did you get involved with that? It is a fiddle. I know. Um, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's been part of my spiritual evolution. And it sounds kind of silly when I say that, but um, one of the things that I found as I started to do more and more of the intuitive and mediumship work that I do is that I need to be able to move energy through my body in a way that really clears things out. So it's kind of a psychic hygiene, uh, for lack of better way to put it. It really is. Um, And to me, there's an element of it that's empowering. It's fun. And it's all of the it's all of this sort of adventure that um, allows me to be deeper and deeper, more deeply connected with this intuition, this inner knowing that I'm sharing out into the world yeah so okay so let's let's back that up a little bit um (laughs) so amy is uh 
in, in, in addition to her pole dancing, that's her hobby. Um, but she is a working <laughs> uh, medium intuitive. I know that sounded strange. Sorry. She's um, full time professional. <laughs> professional. Thank you. That's what I was <laughs> groping for. Um, I know it's hard to say the word I'm professional when I'm in the room. In another sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop. Yeah. Not that kind of pro. <laughs> so. And and so what does that entail for you being a medium intuitive? Oh, gosh. Well, what it entails is that I um, I use my I found ability, I guess, or 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 recovered ability to connect to uh, vibrations within the universal consciousness that allow me to have information and insight into different elements of the world individuals, collective groups of people. Um, it's been fairly fascinating. I know. And I, um, I am a disciple of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been a friend and client of Amy's for a long time. And um, I just adore her. And she's been so helpful in in just countless ways for me. Um, because one of the things that you do is you don't say, okay, this is going to happen to you. This is going to happen to you. This is going to happen to you. You know, you're not like a psychic who tells you step by step. You say, I, you know, I don't know. How do you word it? Like, you know, there's, I see the possibility of this or, you know, do you have blah, blah, blah. blah. How do you, I, yeah, it's in, yeah. it's. I, I mean, I love where you're going with it because it's it's so many times and it's just like pole dancing. It, it makes a lot of sense, right, that I do that because it's this area that people have kind of misunderstood or misconstrued notions about it, right? And it's the same thing with mediumship and in, in, in the intuitive work that I do. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't have a crystal ball. Right. I'm, you know, I'm not going to be able to necessarily tell you all of the things that are going to happen and the day you're going to meet someone or what the lottery numbers are. I mean, that's just not that's just not what I'm being asked to do with with this with this gift, for lack of better words. I um, I connect into universal energy and the information that comes through me is really a connection into the person who I'm working with. So it, it, you, for an example, um, it's, it's connecting into the inner wisdom that already exists. And so I'm really just helping to pull out what you aren't hearing for yourself, but you already really know, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, that's the cool part about it is it's really not the, you know, trying to, cr you know, create something that you're not. It's just helping you to see who you really are. I see you more as um, who was the who was the um i want to use the correct term who was the native american that that guided lewis and clark anybody sacagawea sacagawea you're like a sacagawea <laughs> <laughs> sound like a sack of potatoes i know <laughs> no. i was gonna say that but i wanted to be respectful of the woman fits <laughs> oh, damn it um no yeah you're a tour guide of, of our guide well, i like tour guide but yeah, and we're walking, good, yeah. we're walking, we're um, walking. <laughs> but that that's on your left, we're passing the Grand Canyon. Exactly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's deep. Where you dumped where you dumped all your hopes and dreams back oh. when you were oh, oh, she started my reading already. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm hopeful as they could be. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. The other, the other part that you, um, do is you have the ability to, um, uh, I want to be respectful when I talk say this. Yes. Thank you. Cause we <laughs> yes, talked about that. Like, I don't, I don't want to do the old joke. I see dead people, but, um, Amy <laughs> can communicate with others on the other side. I can. I absolutely can. How the and, hell did that come about? You know, <laughs> was it just like, excuse me, miss? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. No, you know, the, 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 lo the long story that I'll tell in a short, <laughs> short way is that um, when my grandmother passed away about 20 years ago, uh, she started coming around me right after her, her death. 
And it was really cool. It was really easy and safe. And it didn't feel weird. It didn't feel crazy. Um, it just felt normal. It felt like she was still with me. It just wasn't the way that I had known her when she was alive. And so as, as we started to communicate, she and I, I realized that this was a, you know, something that I had been doing my whole life and I didn't really realize it. And I, and for a while I actually shut it down because <clears throat> Really? You know, I was told that it was, well, you know, it oh. wasn't really socially acceptable. Right. Um, and then especially in my family of origin. I mean, it just was, it was, you know, it was something that freaked my family out. And, yeah. And uh, so for a long time, I just put, put it aside and I didn't want anything to do with it. And mm -hmm. honestly, even after this experience with my grandmother, I, you know, I told source, God, love, consciousness, whatever, whatever word works for you. Oh, that's right. That, that's who she communicates with on a general <laughs> level. Sorry. On a general level. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, I just told my own guidance system. I'm like, I'm not doing this. I do not want to talk to dead people. And I certainly don't want to go out in the world and be like, hey, y'all, what do you do for a living? You I don't mean, want to be Teresa Caputo. Caputo. I, I don't. I love her. Believe me, I love her. But my honestly, I did not want to be chasing somebody down in Wegmans or, <laughs> exactly. you know, wherever and be like, excuse me, I have a message for you. I just like, you know, if that's what I'm being asked to do, forget it. Like, right. I'll just, keep, you know, but I'm sorry, I cut you off before you were about to say going out in the world and telling telling people that's what you do for a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a little it was it, it to me, it felt a little awkward awkward and it felt a little well, yeah. intimidating, you know? Yeah. And so it, it, it was this whole thing where I was like, yeah, I don't think this is for me. But then of course, I don't always have a choice in it in that um, the more that I was communicating with my grandmother, the more other people's dead people started showing up. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> really... like, There's a line over here. Amy's going to. <laughs> that, that was the outtake of uh, of that that M Night Shyamalan movie. Right? Oh. <laughs> I see yeah. other people's dead people. I see other people's dead people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, yeah I can tried, I? You know, I tried to get that in the script, but they just they weren't <laughs> can I ask a question? Yes. Absolutely. How I said that on purpose. Ask. I know you did. Um, He's not how, stupid. View, so viewers. when you when you 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 said that your you know it was like your grandmother passed away and then she was there but she was there in a different way. Was was she? Could you physically see her as though she were? Oh, I hate to use the word apparition, but or is it more of a feeling? Is it more of? And you're having you must be having some sort of a dialogue. So how do you know? How did you know that that was? That it was really her and not just your imagination making that happen for you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So no, I don't see dead people. I just talk to them. So, so um, scratch that line. <laughs> but can you hear their voice? Can you hear their voices? Sometimes, the way sometimes. But it's, you know, honestly, I was thinking about this today when I was on a walk with my dog about how it's really hard to explain sometimes because it happens so fast. Um, I can see um, people, but not like I'm looking at you guys, right? I can mm. see them sort of in the back of my mind or in my mind's eye, as somebody might say. Mm. I can hear them, um, but not, you know, the way that I hear you, but I, I, I can, I hear it in a way that the energy gets translated really quickly. And so it's like I'm having a dialogue with them, even though it can be in my own voice. So that's what a little bit like, oh, it's happening. Right. Yeah. But, <laughs> You know, I mean, and again, this is why I didn't want to come out into the world years ago and say I'm doing this work. But um, to answer your question, you know, for, for me, I knew it was her for a couple of reasons. The first is that I smelled her perfume and, and she wore, you know, the same perfume probably my entire life and, and probably longer than that. But so it, I started to smell the perfume in like weird places, like in my car as I was driving down the highway in my kitchen cooking dinner and I'm and and I just was like oh that's so interesting that I'm actually smelling the perfume that my grandmother wore and that was the that kind of opened the gate to <clears throat> more information to come you know more and more connection with her and then the dialogue like you were saying started to happen you know she shared stories with me about her life you know in images that i could see in my mind in in words that she was using to you know to tell the story 
And it just became, <clears throat> it became such a natural thing for me that I didn't, I didn't think that it was really that weird after that. I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 with Amy and I have talked about this. I um, think I have a little bit of the, the intuition and, uh, and I've had, you know, as we call it getting downloads from above and I had the same, I had a similar um, instance when after my father died, both of my parents are gone, but my dad went first and um, he was, uh, he was, he was 89 and he was just going naturally. And so I went out to say goodbye to him and we had a fantastic I, I know as odd as it you know someone that is laying there can barely communicate there was some really good stuff going on and the night that he died my sister called me and it was like 5 30 east coast time where I, I am and she said he passed and when I went to bed that night like I don't know 10 o'clock or whatever I knew he was there he was in the door and then he came in and he sat down on the bed and then he moved, he just, he moved across the bed. He sat on my bed the entire night mm -hmm. and it wasn't, and it wasn't scary. It was comforting. Like the minute all this, I'm laying there in the dark and I get this huge smile on my face and I'm like, oh, thank you for coming. I know you're here. And, you know, just in my head. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, completely. Yeah. But you know, that's, it's funny because that happens to people all the time. Yeah. I mean, you can, you hear stories and stories and stories, even before I subscribed to this as being something that I actually had the ability to do. I heard so many stories about, you know, loved ones showing up in the hospital room when somebody was <clears throat> passing away. Yeah. And, you know, interestingly enough, I was, I was with my grandmother in her final days as well. And it was interesting to watch how people were coming to greet her during that process. Okay, that's my question. That's my other question. Yeah. Both of my parents, well, not so much my mom wasn't that alert at the end, but my dad, he was, you, you could see he, he was smiling and going like, oh, you know, oh, hi, how are you? It was his eyes closed, you know, and I, it was the same, and he was talking about, he was talking to someone in the corner of the room at one point. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm laughing because he was asking. I kid you not. My father was asking if they had brought the potato salad. Yeah, and um, so <laughs> like, oh, he might, so, and and I've heard that you hear that so many times that people as their people are starting to go to the other side. You know, people will say, "Oh, I knew they were talking to someone," or blah, 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 people greeting them. Is that a thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. It happens on both sides, too. You know, very often when I'm doing a reading, uh, you know, a, a, a grandmother or a great grandmother or a great grandfather, or, you know, some family member will come through and say, you know, I was the one that that ushered you into the world. Right. Like, so I people wonder, like, does my mother know about my children? You know, because the mother passed before the children were mm -hmm. born and the mother says, I held them before you did. You know, so I mean, come on. You yeah. Know, that's See, some pretty. I cool love this stuff. And action. as Amy calls it, I love all this woo woo stuff. <laughs> I don't, Fitz, what do you think? I, I, I'm a big fan of, of all of this kind of talk. I'm. And I know as Catholics, we're, we grew right, up not right. We, to. we have that sort of cognitive dissonance where we're, we're not, we're not supposed to be able to you know, reconcile the fact that we believe it, you know, it's like, Oh, but I, I do. I, I think that some people have a gift. They're more in tune with, with that part of, of energy in, in our universe. I'm not, um, <laughs> I, I, I was, tone deaf? I was told that I have, I have some a little bit, but I'm, I, and maybe it's just because I didn't work on it or, or, you know, develop the skill or whatever it is. Um, we, we've had, I've, I've had, um, mediums in, in the studio before that have, uh, made reference to, you know, my grandmother. I mean, what? No, 
<laughs> no, are, is she there? And guess <laughs> what? We're gonna. She's been knocking on my door. Which since one? This We're gonna do it right now. Your, your mom's mom is what she, it makes me feel, and she is coming through like she is very impatient. By the way, because she's like, <laughs> when are you gonna bring me up? When are you gonna bring me? Up? He also says, "Oh, there's my dog. Sorry." He he's in, he sees her too. Hey. Um, she also says that your sense of humor is from her. Her, and not just her, but her side of the family. She's yeah. like, we're hysterical. Yeah. We're hysterical. <laughs> right? Is this okay? Does this sound? That's, yeah, that's pretty right. That's she, pretty also, right. She, she also is t- making me feel like she didn't, she doesn't hold back too many. Like, she's pretty straightforward, <laughs> though. Though, and she says that <clears throat> your family will appreciate this. Um, she didn't say half the stuff that was in her mouth. <laughs> you know, and part of it was, she's like, if I were living today, I'd be on the pole. This is what she said. <laughs> like, seriously. She's like, I would totally be there, you know, like more in her power. But, you know, back in the day, you know, she had certain rules to live by. But she was still <laughs> like, she still couldn't be, um, she's like, couldn't be caged. Right. Mm. She just couldn't be caged. And there's a lot of that wildness uh, energy in your family <laughs> on that side, especially <laughs> is what she's telling That's me. Funny. That's yeah. funny. But she's like patting herself on the back because she's like she looks at you and she's like all of all of the the way that you can move yourself through the world, even when things are really crappy with the humor and with that tenacity and with that belief of, um, you know, like. I, 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 she's almost making me feel like kind of pit bull energy, right? You're just going to go for it and go for it and go for it. And there's not much that backs you down. She's like, that comes, that's, that's been passed down generation to generation hmm. and you are the recipient of it and you're passing it forward too. But in the ways that are, are less, um, she's saying like bullheaded. So I don't know if that fits, but stubborn, right? So you're finding Maybe. ways share that tenacity without maybe some maybe some of the stubbornness around that (laughs) that's interesting how much so how much of of when you when you connect with someone like this how much of of them when they were alive do you sense as far as their personality as far as any physical traits any of that stuff do you get Sometimes it really depends on what they want to, t- to show me. Right. And, um, you know, it's it's funny. I tell the story a lot because, so, you know, there's a lot of people who are skeptical out there and that's fine. Like, it's not my job to convince people that this is real or not real. It's just not. I'm like, it's I don't have the energy for it. Mm. So either you believe it or you don't. And either I give you information that is spot on or it isn't. Right. But um, oftentimes. <clears throat> They, there's a lot of this idea that people want to play these stupid psychic party tricks. Like, well, tell me the last thing she ate before she died. <laughs> right. and, and I'm like, I'm like talking to the, you know, talking to the soul. And she's like, are you effing kidding me? Like, <laughs> they can connect to me and that's what they want to know? Like, seriously. Um, but interestingly enough, this, this person comes through and they'll come through at different ages. So she's actually coming through as a young woman. In her, not in her personality, right? What I just shared with you, I mean, that is me reading her personality. Like she fills the room with energy, um, Hmm. but you know, not, okay, I'm just asking if I can say this because she's saying like, she wasn't always the nicest person, but sometimes she could have been the loudest person. Do you know, does that make sense? Sort of. I mean, I I can kind of, I can kind of see definitely viewed as maybe not the nicest i mean she was always very nice but she did speak her mind right like right. well boy right. you she's the one that would when you see after you see her after a couple of years boy you put on some weight right but okay, <laughs> oh my. not always the nicest person God, that was my grandmother too um one of my grandmothers um but um that that's the things scott and i'm scott i'm glad you're asking the questions because i'm i do so much with amy and i've involved been involved with this with her for such a long time it's better to have somebody who's not yeah. so involved ha- ask the questions cause, yeah because i know everything no i mean i just i know about her i know what she does so the, every time i've oh, had a, a, a oh i'm sorry i'm sorry ahead. no the thought i had was um i'm thinking uh, you're saying this is how she was and does that make sense? I've realized that you're the grandson. How you see her 
she could be completely different. Oh, than how she sees herself. Or no, how she is with her husband, oh. her children, her neighbor, her coworker. <laughs> know what I mean? That's true, but she's going to give me information that's going to resonate with Scott, right? So he, it's oh, not right. like he's okay. going to have to go back and say like, you know, this I, intuitive, I, I, this medium told me that my lovely grandmother who, you know, I sat on her lap <laughs> until I was 12, what, um, you know, <laughs> is really, was really mean, you know, like, yeah. you're not going to have to go back and ask those questions <clears throat> because that's not how it works, you know. Okay. Now, sometimes Scratch you that. do, like, sometimes, sometimes <laughs> I, I'll give you a great example, not, but I don't want to leave this too because she's not leaving. Yeah. Um <laughs> I was I met with a woman one time um, and we were just actually meeting to network less to do this work. And we started we started uh, chatting and all of a sudden she was telling me that she had been diagnosed with <coughs> breast cancer and she didn't know where in the family that the breast cancer had come from. And usually it's hereditary. And I was like, well, your your great aunt died of breast cancer. And he, she's like, I don't know that story. And I'm like, okay, go, you know, just remember it. Mm -hmm. And so in that case, because the aunt was there and she had him and the, and the great aunt had information for this woman about how things were going to play out in her treatment. And so I gave her the information because that's how it happens. Mm -hmm. And um, and later that day, she actually called me and said, I did some research and I found that I have a, I had a great aunt on my father's side who died of breast cancer. Wow. And so, and she didn't even know. So sometimes right. that information will come through, um, but mm -hmm. it's, it's information that can be easily verified. Right. So, um, I, okay. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, grandma to keep you on hold. Excuse <laughs> us. Um, oh, wait, can I ask one more question? Hold on, yeah. grandma. Um, <laughs> we didn't call her grandma. So that's what you call part. her. What? Yeah. You what? <laughs> I want. I was. I wanted to see if Amy. I mean, I'm not trying to do a parlor trick. I wanted to see if you I were going to, if you if were going to come like up it with it. Again. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, she's not giving it. She's not giving me the name. But she also is like she. She feels like she. Um, she didn't ever want to be called grandma. Like she would rather have been right. like Mimi or or something like that. We like called her. We called her Nana. Nana. Okay. So, so that that some something that was less like um, I don't. She makes me feel like she didn't want to associate herself with that word. Not being, she liked being a grandma, but she didn't like to, that word because it made her feel old. And I, interestingly I, enough, because she presents to me right now as very young. Um, did she have reddish hair or like strawberry hair when she was younger? Do you know? I don't know for sure. Okay, because that's how she's showing me. So it's hard to, you know, I've only ever seen pictures of her with head. dark hair, but it could have been red, could have been. Yeah. My mom was a blonde when she was younger, so maybe yeah. she was, too. I don't know. Yeah. So was I. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you know? I was I was this color when I was young, but I get help now. <laughs> um, um, two quick questions. You yeah. it made me think of it. When you say she's presenting as young um, and. Was that you? I talked. I, I think it was you that we talked about one time. I was saying I have a couple people in my life that they come to me, and I think you asked me where you know, and I see them as younger, or or in some cases, if they were children, they're older. So, mm -hmm. the does somebody's soul, or I don't, for lack of a better word, like. Do they okay? Do they get like enlightenment once they pass? I yeah, mean, like am I if when I go, am I going to find out like all the mysteries that I've been wanting to know all these years? Well, but but also if it's yes, like and then a, you'll forget them when you come back in your next life. That's oh, the problem. But like if it, <laughs> but if like it was an infant or small child when they passed, do they can they communicate like as an adult? -ish? Yes. Yes, okay. absolutely. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> and, and again, oftentimes what happens is when they present as, at a certain age, you know, that's to be more from a validation perspective or so the person will understand like <clears throat> this is a young soul that, that, that some, a soul that died very young versus this is a soul who died very old, but then they get to choose. Um, they're, you know, like uh, if an infant died 10 <laughs> years ago, on. <laughs> they could come. They could come back as a ten-year-old. They could come back as a twenty-year-old. I mean, it just depends on on what kind of what they how they want to be embodied in that 
gotcha. in that yeah. in that time. And I can't imagine anyone <clears throat> wanting to come back as a ninety five year old. You know what I mean? Like if they're gonna present themselves like being an old especially if they were unhealthy, they wanna go I would if it were me, I would want to go back to, to my prime when the world yeah. was at my fingertips and my future was bright and I was healthy and you know Every soul is different, though. Yeah. I've had souls come through at the age that they've passed away, um, even very old souls that, that show up in that elderly fig, you know, <clears throat> figure. Um, your grandmother's here. She's like 16, 17, because just as you're saying, she like in her that was the freest she felt in her whole life. Hmm. So it was that time before she got married and had kids and did all of those things, which, you know, back then they did much younger than they do now. Um, it was the time where she actually felt the most alive. And mm -hmm. so that's, you know, cause I ask like, how, why do you present a certain way? And there's all kinds of reasons. I was doing a reading once where, um, uh, the, the way that the soul presented was in this military uniform and they had this really interesting like ball cap military hat, but it wasn't like a trucker hat, right? It was like an old school. And so as I was doing the reading, I'm like, I, I don't understand because this, it feels like this is this 18 year old kid in the, you know, in the army. And the, and the client said that I have that picture of my father in my living room, right? And so he showed up exactly in the way that she would recognize him best, even though he lived well into his 80s, you know, and then come to find out through the reading that he also felt like, not that that was the most alive he felt, but that he felt like when he left the army, and he was in like World War II era, when he left the military, it was when his life stopped, you know, and so that mm. was sort of where he he was showing up to tell that part of the story as well in that in that form. OK, my other quick question along with that is, you know, like when my, my mother passed after my dad and, you know, it was all the talk of, oh, mom's back with dad now, whatever, you know, she's they're back together. What if someone had several spouses <laughs> or what if someone was, you know, had a couple, their spouses die? Like, is it, you know, who do they go with? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not as cut and dry or maybe that does, that's actually not very cut and dry, but it's not like we project a lot of our, our human experience on the soul world. Right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, I tend to, I tended to believe just based on everything that I've been shown in the work that I do, that we actually travel through space and time in pods, right? Like there are certain souls that we hang with for lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. And We're there like are certain spectral souls, dolphins. Exactly. <laughs> Multidimensional. Um, and there's certain, like there's certain souls that we come into contact with in this life experience that aren't really meant to travel with us beyond this one single yeah. experience. Okay, that so makes people, sense. People get, you know, people mm. think, and I, and I, and I don't want to be like Debbie Downer here, right? Because believe what you want to believe. I think at the at the end of the day, that's what matters. But many times, a soul, souls who were say married, you know, here on Earth in this human experience, when they go to the non physical, they don't hang around together. They just don't because of whatever their soul contracts are. Um, but sometimes they do, you know, like Madge, your parents are totally together, you know, and they are like showing me like traveling through really through lifetime after and whether you believe in past lives or not, it doesn't matter. But, you know, this, they are traveling together on this continuous journey. So just know that um, not not all not all souls, though, do hang with. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's a great example. My grandmother, who I was sharing about earlier, she and my grandfather, and sorry, mom and dad, if you're listening to this, um, <laughs> telling a little dirty laundry here. Um, she and my grandfather uh, were were um, divorced in the 1950s mm -hmm. and then got remarried and then separated, but never divorced. So it's, there's kind of like this. Oh. And he, he okay. had a long time girlfriend that he lived with while they were still married. And it was like this very, very interesting configuration. And um, he passed before she, he passed after she did. Um, but when he passed, my grandmother was there to welcome him in. 
right to that, to the non-physical, like welcome him across the bridge. And I, I, afterwards I asked her, I'm like, he was such an SOB, sorry, but it's true. Um, Why would you, why would you be the one to welcome him? And he said, because she said, because I've loved him for lifetimes. And I really got it. You know, that even though in this human configuration and the journey that they had here, that it was really messed up, that their souls made a choice to kind of travel together, you know, Mm -hmm. for some extended period of time beyond uh, beyond this physical life experience. So it's just it's really super interesting how it all plays itself out. Do you believe that that? If, if if we travel like as spirits in pods are there and and when we stop off for our little human experiences here and there are there times where we're are we always with them in our in our living state or could that be missed like one time you go i'm going back you know i'll see you yeah. later you know and then you're with a whole different group of of people in your life and then when you go back you kind of go back to that same to spirit because time and space don't really aren't the same. So it's almost like that. It's like, Oh, Hey, I just, you know, yeah. Yeah. New way to go I'm going to go, I'm going to go do another life. Uh, <laughs> you guys get another round. I'm going to go do a life. I do about right 90, back. 95 years on earth. Well, you're and then talking I'll about be back. Little coming and going and leaving with people. I was like, that sounds like me at the bar. Hey, <laughs> Uh-oh, see on. you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> no, I and I think, but I think exactly. I think exactly. You know, it, I I also think that we can be in, let's just say, this Earth experience uh, right now, and there are members of our pod that we've not come in contact with yet, and and maybe we won't. You know, they're kind of doing their thing, but we're sort of doing it at the same, you know, dimensional time. You know, um, tell my nana, tell her that yes, I do like my hair this way. <laughs> and we miss her my wife and i were just talking about her last night yes of course you were <laughs> we were joking around because i i slept i have to tell you she's been she's been around me for since actually probably last week when when we decided we were going to do this episode and uh and and she was the first one that stepped forward like in line you know <laughs> she's, she's ready. that's so funny is nana gonna give anybody else a turn <laughs> all right nana go go uh go hang out with pop yeah or whoever, or whoever yeah, really she's gonna, she's gonna hang for a little while so we'll see if oh, she has okay. anything else to say but but it's it's super you know it's super interesting and and the mediumship work is only part of what i do right and the other thing that i do is um i channel uh, a group of energies called the greater consciousness and very similar for if people have you know heard of abraham hicks or bashar yeah. or seth or it's very similar in the process it's not similar in the message right we each kind of come come to the table with a different a different variation of the information that needs to be shared because i mean one person could not possibly share the infinite wisdom of the universe it would be a <laughs> lot of work so um I know so you think um, <laughs> <laughs> so i i work with this energy group of energies now this group of energies has never been in the human body that's not their role in this universal consciousness right this universal um energy stream their their role is that they're kind of master teachers um and they're wanting to help to as madge so beautifully said earlier open the possibilities that there's more to this life experience that we are here on this um than than meets the eye and and the more that they help to kind of open that gate to to people's deeper understanding i think the more that as a consciousness as a collective the energy here on the planet rises and ultimately you know that's what we're here for so that's even kind of a whole other side of the work that i do <clears throat> yeah and that's um th- it's been incredibly um beneficial to me over the years um and i almost like i, I Okay, this is combined with something else. I almost kind of like it that you don't say, well, sometimes I get frustrated. I wish you would just say, yes, you're going to have this job. Um, But I also like it that you leave it kind of open-ended because do you ever get, oh, I think you've answered this to me before, but um, do you ever, do they give you bad news or do you 
they only give you, I don't know, how does that work? <laughs> Do you not tell people certain things or? No, it doesn't work that way. Luckily, um, the, the way that the, the greater consciousness, first of all, doesn't differentiate between good or bad news, right? They just give me information that the client is, is ready to hear and needs to hear. Often um, they're, they're, they give me the words to be able to, to give the information, even if it might be you know, a little bit unnerving or scary information. Like if something, if they show me that something is about to happen in someone's life that could, you know, be topsy turvy for them to, but they give me the right. <clears throat> and I'll say, I judge it right. But they give me the words that um, to come across in the most nurturing and easy way to share the information. It's yeah. not sugarcoating it. It's not pretending no. it's not going to happen, you but, did but that. I'm also, you did that for me once. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but you know, I'm only allowed to have what I'm allowed to have. Yeah. And I think that's really what's most important. But you know, we have free will, and so a lot of times um, they're not going to give me specifics because the if I give specific information to the client, then they're going to they can use that and say, oh, well, if I do one, two, three then this is going to happen yeah. or I'm going to yeah. save myself from this. And so that's called self-fulfilling prophecy, right? We all do that. Like yeah. somebody plants an idea in someone's head and then they, and then they just expect it. And so that's mm -hmm. a lot of, cause I've asked this question of the greater consciousness before, like, why can't you, you know, say like, Oh, on this date, you're going to meet this, you know, this person and their name is going to start with the letter P I don't know. Right. Yeah. And, and they're like, because then the client will only be waiting around for that to happen yes. and they yes. lose the yeah. changes their path. Right. It changes, changes their, their path. path. Yeah. It's like, re it's like, what was that? Uh, um, uh, Hulu show, right. That about, um, Oh yeah. 19, uh, uh, two. Yeah. 11, 22, 23, 11, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I yeah, love that. Wait, it was great. I know. Crazy. I know Go look it up. Is. It's great. It's on Hulu. Stephen King. Uh, James, so James what's Franco. it called? You just said a bunch of numbers. 11, <laughs> 11, 22, 63. That's the day Kennedy was, was assassinated. Oh. It's a Stephen King novel that they made into a, a, a series, a limited series on, on Hulu. Gotcha. Yeah, and they kept going back and rewriting the hi rewriting history, and then you could see how it changed history going forward. Yeah, mm, right. Yeah. So the intention of this work is not to is not to lead somebody down a specific path, right? It's to illuminate the path that they're already on, so that they can start to listen to their own inner wisdom, mm -hmm. and then make the choices for their life experience that really are most aligned for them. That's the power in it, because here's yeah. the thing. Wait, we can go to psychics and gurus and healers and teachers and, you know, whatever, whatever names, and they Shaman. can give us very specific information and we can go and do that. But that doesn't help us evolve. And it's certainly mm -hmm. what it does is it, it creates an opportunity for us to give our power away. You know, oh, well, this expert knows better than me. Part of my journey and part of my passion for this work is teaching people how to find the connection to their own inner knowing yeah. so they don't need to to put you know to to rely on external information to make their decisions it's really powerful and empowering mm -hmm. when you start to tap into that place within you that just knows even if they don't you don't know how it knows um, and I'm just gonna say this real quick while while we're in it if you want to know more about this or you want to talk to Amy or something um her website is ask or no yeah what is it again it's amywhite.co oh amywhite.co see i have it automatically in my browser so i don't even know anymore <laughs> i just start to <laughs> type a no and it comes up so amywhite.co um if you want to know more about what she does or connect connect with amy yeah. um uh so is nana still there <laughs> yeah she's she's still here she's just hanging out she's okay. just hanging out yeah do you i because we were gonna kind of do readings i don't know if this is kind of it do you have any other you know me insight for us or messages or for either one of well, us do you guys have any specific questions how about we go there who else is there is that is well, that valid Nana's, question? Nana, yeah, Nana's really uh, taking up a lot of space right now. Um, but you know, Madge's parents are here, of course. Um, Sit down, Nana. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Tom yeah, and Madeline. 
Yeah, they're here. They're they're um Are they're they funny. Me? <laughs> oh my gosh. Really? Do you want to hear yeah. from them? They're they are so proud of you. Here's let me tell you what okay. I'm you just said they're funny. I'm sorry. Was... They're so funny. They're funny together. Like like um like uh <laughs> Laverne and Shirley funny. Like <laughs> Look, slapstick funny. I don't know. I, I, that's what they're show. That's what I'm being shown. Right? Slamil, slamazel. <laughs> Hassle Pfeffer Incorporated. Da, 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 da. We're going to do so, it. So here's, here's, here's what your parents are saying. And, and just so everybody knows, like I've never read Madge's parents before. So this is no, a brand she has new, not. This is a brand new thing. But, but what they're saying is that one of the things that they learned collectively, right, together in the non-physical is that they held on very tightly to their belief systems in a way that didn't make give a lot of room for you or really your siblings to explore and expand beyond the, the straight and narrow path that they created. Your dad's like, I built that path with my hands, one block, one block, one block. And he's really proud of it. And, and, and he says, and I know that it was limiting. It was limiting for all of you. So they really came to this awareness and, and they're not, you know, a lot of times, and I don't mean this, I'm trying to just, I'm like asking like the best way to say this because they're not sorry in the way right. that like they have to feel like they have to apologize because they both are saying like, look, we did the best we could exactly. with what we knew. We just didn't know that we could have done better. But here's what they're saying is that what they, what they one wish that they have for you is that you you reach back back to the places in you where those where the passion was born and you take that and you run with it and you don't have to stay on the path you don't have to explore only what you were conditioned to believe in fact they are cheering from from the sidelines i know i'm sorry um, oh i'm so every happy time, I mean... every time that you kind of walk the way to make your own way, they're there rooting you on. And it's almost like your father is showing me like he drops, I, I was asking if it was breadcrumbs, but it's almost like pennies or, <laughs> or something where he will leave you signs of like, don't go down the path that I told you to go down, go down this path. And so he is there directing traffic um, and your mom is running interference. So sometimes when you feel like you're hitting a brick wall because you're trying so hard to push the old way of being, uh -huh. and they're there kind of interfering in the most loving way because they really want to, to, to be that Peggy Starlight that you've, that you've always known you were. And so they're just, they're like, sis booba ra ra <laughs> on the sidelines they are your biggest fans they're saying and they mean it get your not... ethel merman out madge that's right <laughs> do it no business like show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that that's beautiful resonates so hard and i kind of knew that and they didn't do bad at all no, I had an amazing childhood. They just didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> I mean, I'd say, I'd say you turned out pretty good, Madge. You know, I mean, I don't know you really Thank well, you. but you know, I we've did. been we've been working together for a while now, and and you're you're a fantastic person. You're very funny, Thank and you. I think I think your parents did a great job. Thank you, and that's so funny. I I I know what your father my father about the i built it and dad that's why i wrote that poem for you remember the poem i wrote and that you i i put it on a decorative paper and mom framed it and it was on the wall i talked about him being a a soldier in world war ii and a soldier for his children yeah yeah he made the path and built it and did everything yeah oh my god and, this is crazy. <laughs> and he does like I, I will say that he you know and he, again they don't think that they don't feel like they did anything wrong no, by yeah. you either but what they are saying is that you know it's interesting it goes back to what fitz was asking earlier 
uh, about, you know, what it's maybe you didn't ask the question, but you wanted to, is, <laughs> is that, <laughs> is that, you know, it's kind of like, what do we learn? What, well, who do we become when we're on the other side? And mm. the thing is that, that you don't, you don't do the whole, like, oh my God, you have to sit for a thousand years and gnash your teeth and revisit all of the, you know, all the times you stole bubble gum when you were five, all the way up to like the speeding tickets, right? It's not that, mm -hmm. but soul, our soul, and this might be a little deep, but our souls are here for expansion. Like that's what they're here for. That's what we're here for. And so everything that happens in our life is about this ability to expand. But when we die, when we transition, we don't stop expanding. You know, we don't stop. The soul continues to expand. And so part of that comes from being able to look at this life that we lived on on Earth and say, oh, wow, I couldn't see this from my earthly body, from my earthly experience, from my human experience, but I can see it now. And so when, when they say that, and your dad especially says, yeah, I, you know, that was really important to me, that straight and narrow but now from another vantage point, he's like, but I wish that the path had been wider. You know, it would have served you all, not just you, but all of you to yeah. have yeah. more, um, to have more space to come into your own as you're walking the path that he built. So that's, that's sort yeah. of a day. He's not, he doesn't regret it. Sure. But at the same time, now he, he has an awareness that there was more that he could have done had he known yeah. and he said look if we knew better we would have done better a i mean absolutely. i completely feel that energy from them absolutely i did and don't you know we all did it anyway later <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know but and they're saying that you know some of this is you're you're all in some ways different ways and when i say all like you and your siblings yeah. are all in different ways starting to really at the beginning in some ways of exploring what it means to have more free reign over what if i did these things that i've always wanted to do but didn't believe that it was the right thing to do yeah yep um just one real quick last thing for me is any it's i she has not I don't want to say this in a mean way, but I have not stopped getting messages or being getting energy from my nanny McCall or nanny Madigan, not nanny McCall for like the last year. Is she there or no? She's not because she's there. Yeah. I mean, okay. she's here, but she's, I mean, you know, that that's, I mean, that's, that's, yeah, she's I talking to me directly. validation, but yeah, she's right there, man. She's on your team. You know, it's almost like the, in a way, the same, um, uh, resonance d as I had with my grandmother, right? It's that mm -hmm. same, like I was having one-to-one -one conversations with her, like she were still here in, in the living. And she is on, my grandmother is on my, you know, board of directors, right? That's, she is my director of operations. That's like, Nanny Madigan, I, really I think. I need support. Mm -hmm. I call on my grandma and she's here helping me from the energetic realm. So, and that's exactly what you have with your grandmother too. Yeah. But I love that all this grandmother conversation today too. With... I know. Do you take requests? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all week. Tip your bartenders. <laughs> I, I don't know. I would, I would, I would really love for someone to, for a message for my mother from someone, from anyone in, in her family that she lost. I mean, I know it's it's presumptuous for me to say, "Hey, can you find?" I, I yeah. just Wait. like I, that would make that would make my. Is your mother still here? Yeah. Oh, but she wants to hear from somebody. I, I want. Yeah, oh, I, I would love you. to pass a message to my mother <clears throat> saying, "So and so said that." I, you know, tell her that we did this podcast and everything, and and say, yeah. "So and so said this." I, I know that it, it's. Does your mother have a brother that's passed on? Yes. Mm -hmm couple they were a couple so she had one um i know this is gonna sound a little cliche but was she was she like an irish twin with one of her brothers like were they very close in age i don't think so no okay because what this because this is they're, they're making me feel like they were very close so oftentimes the first thing that they show me is like close in age but there was some like special bond yeah. you know if yeah. nothing um mm -hmm. and that's so that's the energy that i have here um, they make me feel like, cause they, they're, oh, they're making me feel like they're not like, they keep saying like, we're about the same age. We're about the same age, but uh, you know, I, 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 
Could be. I, 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 I may be not knowing. <clears throat> yeah. So it doesn't feel like there's 10 years between them. Because you know, I'm feels thinking, like it's, very I'm thinking it's my Uncle Billy who died when I was very young. I was like three. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's that. Um, is he was he older? Older than my mother? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Well, again, it's I yeah. don't remember. They're making me, he's making me feel like they were very close in age. It could have been. Mm hmm. So, I mean, so first of all, the what he's saying is that um, he is here. He is here with with a, a big pod of people who 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 <laughs> are members a posse. Of, uh, he's got a posse, right? Because he just stepped in and like even Nana was like, OK, I'm going to stand over here. Um, but they're all like like people from her family, both from her mother's side of the family and her father's side of the family. They're all come together. So w like we were talking about pods before. This is a case and, and I don't see this very often where there really are the sole family. And so no, first of all, because I think it, they're making me feel that it's really important for your mother to know that they are all together. Um, and secondarily, to know that this brother is somebody who has been um, and he's making me feel like she she knows that he's been around, but he comes around her a lot and has for years and years and years. Um, and he can show up in things like he says, like, he'll flicker the lights or, you know, there'll be like just a shadow out the corner of her eye. And she'll she wonders. And, she, and, and I know she pushes against some of this, but to know that he's there and has been. Um, um, and so that's really powerful. So whatever bond they had, it never broke when he passed away. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I could go on and we could both go on we about this for hours, but. We're running out of time. <laughs> um, but I did want to bring up, bring up something that um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the app Clubhouse. Yes. Um, Amy and I and Fitz, you too, <laughs> are going to do a kind of a, a Madge After Dark talk on Clubhouse. <laughs> Ooh, when's this happening? <laughs> this will be happening Monday, March 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Monday, March 8th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you're on the, the app Clubhouse, it's, it's just an iPhone thing? It's only for iPhone right now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I know they have an Android developer on staff now, but it's at, it's only iPhone or iPad. So any uh, i any i i i, I I devices, not laptop, but your devices. Oh, okay. I was to say, you don't think a MacBook would do. Okay. iOS. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it, but if you are not a already on there, you it's still at the stage that you need an invite. Mm -hmm. So I've got some invites, a limited number. If you would like an invite, uh, let me know um, either in the comments down in YouTube or um, if you follow me on any other social media, uh, DM me there. But also my email is madge at madgemadigan.com. So, um, and I don't know, Fitz, do you have any I, you know, invites? I'll, yeah. I th what do you get, well, five I'm, or three yeah, or something like five. that? I, well, ha we, I have all five, so. We could scrounge up, I'm sure, a couple if, if there's more, if... You know, I'm but sure. not, but not many. We got it's my like Venmo. A handful. My Venmo is uh... <laughs> <laughs> my Venmo is at Madge Madigan. <laughs> I'm not my Venmo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Joe. the one that matters right there. That's Do you right. have a little? You you should have a Venmo tip jar for your pole dancing. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I won't have any money left. <laughs> Fitz. When I come back to Rochester for a visit, I'm going to I'll take the both of you to a little studio uh, there that I've been following on Instagram and we'll play a little bit on the pole. Yay! Is that uh, like aerial artists or something? I think it's called. Oh, my gosh. Now. Yeah, I now, think that's uh, it. Rock. Yeah. Rock. Aerial, aerial. Maybe. Rock um, aerial. Is it in like Village Gator? And oh, no. Um, I think it's in Brock. Oh, really? In Brockport? West Side? West Side? West Side. I think it's the West Side. Sorry. There's no, a place, there's a place it's in... Many, it's been out too many years since I lived in Rochester, but... 
um, there used to be a place over by um, Artisan Works. Yes, that's um, the one I'm thinking. That's not there anymore. I don't, you oh. know, but I'm not there anymore. So, <laughs> listen, we're not going to give any cares? more information about these people until they pay me. Uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> So if you're an aerialist or an aerialist organization, reach out to Madge and let her know because we're going to get her on the pole, y'all. Hell yeah. You <laughs> can. That's um, going to be one for the record books. I'm, right, I'm ready. If I can. I'll bring the video cameras. It's going to take some torque to lift this up. But <laughs> <Some> torque. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, in okay, case you want to see Amy, uh, more of Amy's pole dancing yes <laughs> amy, please amy on the pole on instagram amy on the pole on instagram, amy on, the oh. on instagram no yeah. not like that fits no i mean i didn't put i, I wanted to put it up there i wanted That's to okay. put the <laughs> um and also and so then amy um your ask amy what no stop saying that amy white dot co yes and amy then white. your other co. social media so I'm also on Instagram at Ms. MZ Amy White, and that's my intuitive medium page. That's where I share um, my truth bombs because I am a truth bomb dropper, um, as Great well info. as information on upcoming events. Open, I, I host a monthly open um, channeling call, and I've been doing a lot more on Clubhouse as well. And so I can't wait to do this. Madge after dark because this will be a fun conversation to continue. I think I would like to book a session like immediately. I want more. This wasn't long cool. enough. Yeah, cool. I've got to do it. I would love it. It's I would love so. It. I to me, I fulfilling is the word. It's it's so it's soul filling. That's the word that's coming to me. Joyful. It's filling up my my tank. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? And I can and I can do that work and be a pole dancer and you know have she, my vodka martini anytime I want. <laughs> she does it all, people. She is the coolest chick. She's in the cool broad club with me. Fitz, you can be an honorary member. Cool. Cool broads. We'll, we'll take a vote. We'll take a vote on Clubhouse. So you have to join us there to find the results. It's like the voice, right? Yeah. Like America's gonna vote. Yeah. Will Fitz be a member? Of the CBC, the Cool Broad Club, <laughs> the Cool Broads Club, exactly. Hell yeah, yeah. So join us uh, on Clubhouse on Monday, March eighth at seven p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if you need an invite, like I said, drop me a comment. Um, just real quick, you got Amy's info, my info on social media is um, on a, everything is basically at Madge Madigan. Um, my YouTube channel is Madge Unmuted. If you're not on it right now, please like, share, and subscribe. Hell yeah. I would be ever so grateful. And like, share, and subscribe Amy stuff and Fitz's Rock Fox Studios. Uh, he's the best. We got all kinds of shit we can do here. <laughs> Rockfox.com <laughs> And with that, Amy, I want to thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. So good. Oh, my God. You're wonderful. I love you tons. I love you tons. Okay. And it's um, okay. What? I mean. Just okay? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, with that, Amy, thanks. And uh, for everybody else, we'll see you next time on Match Unmuted. Bye. Bye.